Shirley H. Grossman was born September 18, 1922 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Normally the date of birth would be the launching point of this video, but the issue of Shirley's year of birth was a mystery. Some think that Shirley listed a date of birth earlier than the actual date to seem older. Shirley had a mature look in her teens and could easily pass for older and could then be cast in roles for older characters. Others suggest that being vague about the date gave the actress some mystery about her. R.J. Jameson, a name that will come up often in these segments, did a very thorough research for her book, Grayson Hall, A Hard Act to Follow. She was able to find records at Shirley's elementary school that confirmed that Shirley Grossman was, in fact, born in 1922. Shirley's parents were Joe and Eleanor Grossman. Joe had a number of jobs. He was a bookie, a private investigator, and a used car salesman. Mom Eleanor had acted early in life, but at the time of Shirley's birth was a housewife with dreams of being a society wife and mother. Shirley was an only child. Shirley's parents separated when she was eight and lived apart from each other. They never divorced. When Shirley was about 12 years old, she was asked what she wanted to be when she grew up. She said, I want to be on stage and those in attendance challenged her to go ahead and do something. Shirley answered with a piercing scream and she was never again asked about her dreams. As discussed earlier, Shirley had a mature look. She also reached her adult height of five foot six inches in her teens and began going to New York on auditions. She settled in New York and took the stage name Shirley Grayson when she was 19. Shirley had a brief marriage to actor Ted Brooks in the mid-1940s. Reportedly, Ted and Shirley met in June 1941 when they were both performing in minor roles in a play in Philadelphia. Shirley and Ted lived together in Los Angeles for three years. She auditioned for films and it was up for the female lead in The Hasty Heart with Ronald Reagan. The part would go to Patricia Neal. The climate in Los Angeles did not suit Shirley who had asthma and cyanitis. We will hear more about this later in Grayson's life. Shirley returned to the East Coast, which took quite, quite a toll on their marriage. An interesting note, when Ted and Shirley were divorcing, he asked her for alimony. This was unheard of in the 1950s. Shirley returned to New York and shared an apartment with actress Jan Holm. Shirley, as they say, hit the boards as actors did in New York, going to multiple auditions and casting calls. Shirley had a role in a play entitled Within a Glass Bell that previewed in West Point, Connecticut in 1950. A Yale graduate student named Sam Hall would see an article about the play in Variety. This caught his attention because Sam and Shirley had experienced a disastrous double date a few years earlier. It is reported that mid-date Sam paid the check and walked out. The relationship with Shirley and Sam Hall is important to the story of Grayson Hall, so ta some time will be given to it in this video. Allison Samuel Hall, also known as Sam Hall, remembered the disastrous date with Shirley Grayson. He was also aware that Shirley had married Ted Brooks and had moved to Los Angeles. The article in Variety led him to believe that Shirley had returned to New York, which interests him. Sam called a friend and asked how he might get in touch with Shirley. The friend convinced him to attend a party hosted by Shirley in her New York apartment. Shirley and Sam did connect this time and ended up sneaking out of the party, where Shirley was the host, to spend time together. Shirley and Sam were instantly inseparable. They were married on January 12, 1952 in a formal ceremony at St. John's Lutheran Church in Manhattan. Shirley had converted from Judaism for the marriage to please Sam's parents. Shirley and Sam also kept the marriage to Ted Brooks a secret, thinking that Sam's parents would not approve. Some accounts of Grayson Hall's life leave out her first marriage. Shirley Grayson was looking for a different stage name. Sam would always call her by her last name, Grayson, like she was an old army buddy. She selected the name Grayson Hall, so all accounts of her acting roles from 1960 on will list Grayson Hall as her name. If anyone called her Shirley, she would say, don't call me that. In the early 1950s, in addition to acting roles, Grayson also studied theater with Lee Strasberg, founder of the Author's Studio, and Constance Collier, British stage actress and a highly regarded acting coach. In 1955, Grayson was cast in six characters in need of an author. 
The play featured actors who needed to be flamboyant. The, players, the play's director, Tyrone Guthrie, had some sage advice for the cast. Guthrie said that he could not understand American actors' preoccupation with reality. This is theater. If audiences want reality, they should go outside and watch a car wreck. These words stuck with Grayson, and throughout her career, she was drawn to characters who were larger than life. Grayson and Sam wanted to have children. Grayson was in her mid-30s, so it seemed like the time was right, or perhaps it was too late. During the 1950s, women usually did not have babies in their 40s, as some choose to do now. Shortly before the birth of their child, Grayson and Sam found a seven-room apartment near Carnegie Hall that would become their home for 30 years. They filled it with antiques and painted all of the rooms red. Over the years, Grayson chose to do many, many interviews in the apartment. The apartment itself noted in the interview. After a difficult pregnancy, Grayson gave birth to Matthew Benedict Sutton Hall on August 19, 1958. Grayson enjoyed being a new mother and used this time to care for her new baby and also to decorate their new apartment. There are many stories to share about Matthew Hall as he grew up literally in the theater and backstage on TV. One account referred to Grayson, Sam, and Matthew as a triune. The three of them were inseparable. <laughs>